If you follow this channel for even a little while, you know that I love 70s, 80s, and 90s synthesizers and studio gear. But I also enjoy the benefits of stuff made in this century. And most all of it can be made to communicate with a protocol like MIDI. The MIDI timecode standard transmits complete SMPTE values every two frames. Even analog tape machines can have a dedicated track striped with linear SMPTE timecode, making that tape machine a slave to a control device such as a hardware sequencer. With the aid of a SMPTE to MTC conversion box or spec'd out MIDI interface, analog multitracks and many popular DAWs such as Logic Pro can be synced with a variety of MIDI devices, old and new. Today, a late 90s Roland MC80 hardware sequencer will be the master followed by Logic Pro. In this example, I have a basic percussion track sequenced on the MC80 that triggers a Roland R8M using a stock drum kit, as well as sounds from the SNR804 electronic card and the SNR810 dance card. There isn't much to configure for this setup, but a few details need to be highlighted. First, MIDI is routed everywhere with a combo of a JLC Synapse MIDI router for last century hardware and a Motu MIDI Express 128 for DAW software integration. Details for how the Synapse and MIDI Express work together is explained in a previous video with the link in the description. The basic synchronization setup won't change here because of the MIDI routing system in place. It only means that I don't have to unplug and replug gear connections. All of this could be accomplished even without a patch base system. From the MC80, output number one will send both MIDI notes and MIDI timecode sync messages to connected gear. My example here is small enough that it won't bottleneck the entire system with MIDI data overflow, but ideally MTC would have a dedicated MIDI output to ensure timing to all gear is rock solid and jitter free. The MC80 allows for this consideration, so even though I won't need to take advantage of this feature in this instance, here you can see a specific port for MTC can be chosen. So now I'll load a file on the MC80 containing a rhythm I've been messing with based on Seawolf's old friend. The tempo is already defined here at 74 quarter notes per minute, and I'll be using the increment decrement keys in addition to the four cursor keys on the MC80 to navigate to menus and selectable fields on screen. I've located the file I want and I'll load it by pressing F6. It's a small file that loads pretty quickly. Pressing the Tools button presents a utility menu that includes system options, storage management, and for our needs here, MIDI configurations. Pressing button F3 selects the MIDI submenu. This is the default setup menu for MIDI configurations indicated by a darkened tab above button F1. There are MIDI input options above button F2, but we're interested in the MIDI synchronization functions on the sync tab above button F3. So we'll press that. On the right hand side, MTC sync out should be out number one. Frame rate is already at 30 frames per second, the highest resolution possible for MTC, so we're good with that. The offset time will be set to 1 hour, 0 minutes, 0 seconds, 0 frames as synchronization starting point for the first beat of the first measure. Pressing Tools now exits the main screen where the song is waiting for playback when we're ready. Logic Pro now needs a new session created so we can play with synchronization to the MC80. When prompted with basic parameters for this new session, I'm only concerned with selecting the appropriate frame rate and tempo. The frame rate chosen on the MC80 is set at 30 frames per second. Logic Pro, however, has higher frame rates available since it operates in a modern HD video environment. I'll choose a frame rate at 30 per second and then select 74 beats per minute as the tempo to match the MC80 song setup. First, I'll create an audio track to record the percussion from the R8M drum module and I'll also create an external MIDI track to record the note data flowing from the MC80 to both the R8M sound module and Logic Pro's MIDI input. Since I'll want to allow recorded MIDI data in Logic Pro to later trigger the R8M drums, I'll set the external MIDI track in Logic to use a designated port with appropriate MIDI channel, 
on the Motu MIDI Express interface. With both audio and MIDI tracks in Logic Record enabled, I'll know when sound and MIDI notes arrive successfully at the computer. I have my toolbar in Logic Pro set up with an icon to enable and disable sync functions easily, so let's see what sync parameters need to be in place for Logic to sync up to external timecode. Under the General tab, which determines Logic's slave settings, ensure that sync mode will be MTC, frame rate will be 30 FPS, always validate MTC, and bar position starts at first beat of the first bar, and SMPTE starts at the one hour mark. Under the Audio tab, which has audio and MIDI timecode parameters, be sure the MTC sample rate and deviation sliders are centered. I select MTC trigger plus auto speed detection under the audio sync mode so that timecode tempo is constantly monitored ensuring that a constant audio sample rate is used against timecode variations, especially for longer regions. Under the MIDI tab, which configures Logic Pro as a master to external devices, there isn't anything to alter since Logic will be a slave and not a master device in this demo. It is worth noting that Logic Pro would completely ignore MIDI machine control, even if checked, once MTC data is recognized. Finally, the tab labeled Unitor sets up parameters for Unitor 8 MIDI interfaces, which were integral to Logic back when it was, like the Unitor 8, an eMagic product. It's a fantastic MIDI interface should you be looking for one, but nothing needs to be fiddled with here unless you have that interface. So Logic is ready. Sync function is active, and both the audio track and MIDI track are ready to record. The rhythm pattern on the MC80 starts at the second measure, beat one, verified here on screen. Both audio from the R8M and MIDI notes from the MC80 have been recorded, and I've disabled sync mode now, so Logic ignores syncing to external timecode while playing back audio in the session. Okay, let's unmute the MIDI track and add another audio track to layer another percussion kit. And I'll also change the routing on the Synapse MIDI patch base so that the MIDI note playback will flow from Logic Pro instead of the MC80. Fun side note, the Synapse will display MTC as it passes through the router on the way to other MIDI gear, so I'll take this opportunity to set up the function because it is pointlessly awesome. The original audio track gets muted, and the new audio track is armed for recording. I'll insert the SNR804 electronic ROM card into any one of the three available slots. And now I can switch from the junkyard kit with stock sounds to the electronic drum kit that accesses the ROM card. The newly recorded electronic drum kit audio track is taken out of record ready mode and then muted. Yet another new audio track is created and put into record ready status for one final drum kit track. I'll load a final card with 909 and CR78 sounds into an open slot and change the drum kit on the R8M to access those sounds. Now this drum kit had to be created manually in one of the last two user slots since the dance card hadn't yet been released when the R8M hit the stores. Tedious, but ultimately worth it. The last audio track is taken out of record ready mode and muted. I'll also mute the MIDI track so no notes are sent to the R8M on this next playback. 
I'm setting up a four measure loop starting with measure two through measure five to audition the three drum kits recorded on the audio tracks. So let's take a listen. So obviously a very simple implementation of both Logic as a timecode slave to external hardware and a simple streamlined method of recording audio and MIDI data simultaneously. The flexibility built upon this functionality, however, can be quite powerful. When synchronizing with tape machines, I would suppose it would be easier to have software follow the mechanical dictations of motors rather than the other way around, though both should be possible. I have an old Tascam 688 cassette multitrack and a Yamaha MD4S mini disc recorder that might make for interesting demos. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more old hardware interlocked with uh, a DAW like Logic Pro.